Escape Velocity Escape velocity is the minimum velocity needed for a projectile to escape entirely from the gravitational field of another body, usually a planet or a star. So in order to escape the gravitational field of a mass, the projectile has to reach a distance from the mass where the gravitational potential energy is equal to zero, and that means it effectively has to get to an infinite distance from that mass. The minimum initial velocity needed for a projectile to reach this point is the situation where it comes to rest when it reaches this distance. So the projectile has just enough velocity to reach the point at which gravitational potential energy is equal to zero and come to rest as it reaches that point. So the projectile must have zero kinetic energy at the point where it has zero gravitational potential energy. As we're talking about projectiles, which are objects moving only under the influence of gravity, the problem involves a closed system. The sum of kinetic and potential energy must be constant, as in a closed system there are no energy inputs. Written as an equation, we can say that E subscript Ki plus E subscript Pi equals E subscript Kf plus E subscript Pf. That is the sum of the initial kinetic energy E subscript Ki and initial potential energy E subscript Pi of the projectile equals the sum of the final kinetic energy E subscript Kf and the final potential energy E subscript Pf. As E subscript Kf plus E subscript Pf are equal to zero, because the kinetic energy of the projectile at the point at which its gravitational potential energy equals zero is going to be zero, the sum of the final kinetic and potential energy for the projectile is zero. As the sum of the final kinetic and potential energy must be equal to the sum of the initial kinetic and potential energy, that means that the sum of the initial kinetic and potential energies must also be zero. Remember that kinetic energy E subscript K equals one half mv squared, where m is mass in kilograms and v is velocity in meters per second, and E subscript P, gravitational potential energy, is equal to minus capital G m1 m2 on R, where capital G is the universal gravitational constant, m1 and m2 are the masses of the two objects in kilograms, and r is the distance between their centers of mass in meters. We can further simplify the problem by considering a projectile launched vertically from the North Pole, which means that we can ignore the effect of the Earth's rotation. We can say that E subscript Ki plus E subscript Pi, the sum of the initial kinetic and potential energy, is zero, as the sum of the final kinetic and potential energy is equal to zero, and the sum of the initial kinetic and potential energy is equal to the sum of the final kinetic and potential energy. We can rewrite this as E subscript Ki initial kinetic energy equals minus E subscript Pi. That is, the initial kinetic energy is equal to minus the initial potential energy. Gravitational potential energy is the amount of work done to move an object from outside the gravitational field of a mass to some point within the gravitational field of a mass. Substituting in from the equations for gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy and solving for V, we can calculate a general formula for the velocity necessary for a projectile to escape the gravitational field of any mass. We know that E subscript Ki must be equal to minus E subscript Pi. The initial kinetic energy has to be equal to minus the initial potential energy. Substituting in the formulas for kinetic and potential energy, we get the relationship 1 half mv squared is equal to capital G 
little m, big M, on R, where little m is the mass of the projectile in kilograms, capital M is the mass of the object from whose gravitational field it is escaping, R is the distance between the centers of mass of the two objects in meters, and V is the velocity of the projectile in meters per second. Capital G is the universal gravitational constant. We can rearrange that as V squared equals 2 capital G capital M on R as the little m's cancel. We're left with the equation V equals the square root of 2 capital G capital M on R where V is the escape velocity. The mass of the projectile has no effect on the value of the escape velocity. It depends simply on the mass of the planet or other body from whose gravitational field it is escaping and r its initial distance from the center of mass of that planet or other body in meters. If we substitute in the values for the Earth, we can calculate the escape velocity for the Earth. This gives us v equals the square root of 2 by 6.67 by 10 to the minus 11 the universal gravitational constant, multiplied by 5.97 by 10 to the 24, mass of the Earth in kilograms, over 6.38 by 10 to the 6, the average radius of the Earth in meters. This gives us a value of V for the Earth of 40,200 kilometers an hour. So the escape velocity for the Earth is 40,200 kilometers an hour or 1.12 by 10 to the 4 meters per second. Summary. The escape velocity is the minimum velocity for a projectile to escape the gravitational field of a mass. For a projectile, the sum of the initial kinetic and potential energy is equal to the sum of the final kinetic and potential energy. As the sum of the kinetic and potential energy of a projectile is constant. For a projectile that comes to rest at infinity, the sum of the final kinetic and potential energy must be equal to zero. Therefore, as the sum of the kinetic and potential energies is constant, the sum of the initial kinetic and potential energies must also be equal to zero. Therefore, E subscript Ki plus E subscript Pi is equal to zero. We can rearrange this as E subscript Ki equals minus E subscript Pi and substituting in from the equations for potential and kinetic energy, we get the equation 1 half mv squared equals capital G little m big M on R. Rearranged, this is v squared equals 2 capital G capital M on R. Taking the square root of both sides, we get the equation v equals the square root of 2 g m on R where v is the escape velocity. Thank you for watching.